Hello everyone, Chris here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use different layers on Roll20 grid maps. Now, if you don't already know, uh, as the DM, you would use these maps, or these grids rather, to set up uh, possibly an environment for your game to play in, rather just for your own purposes, or if you want them to actually have tokens and to move around on your board by inviting other players into the game, uh, which is mostly what it was originally intended for. So uh, to create those maps, you have three different layers. The first is map and background. Second is objects and tokens. And third is GM overlay. Now, when you are <clears throat> adding artwork onto these layers, you can actually put anything you want on any of these three layers, regardless of if it looks like a map. It could even be literally um, a map that someone else has drew, um, drawn, and you just put that on your grid. You could put that on map and background, which it probably goes on, uh, but you could also put it on the other layers. So which do you put on which? Well, uh, generally speaking, map and background, the difference is that these are going to be things that are not representative of objects that um, can be moved around in the game world or should be moved around in the game world. Um, for instance, um, trees are probably not going to move in most cases, so that could go on the map and background. Uh, grass, tiles, uh, you see like all of these things that I've set up here. Right now I'm on the map and background layer and that's why I can select it. Um, those are things I would put on the map and background. Um, possibly also objects like a uh, rug. Uh, that, it, you know, in some cases it's kind of arguable. It's like, well, does that rug move though? Um, is it going to hide like a secret door under it? And if you think you might have to move it, then probably put it on objects and tokens. But um, for most other stuff that should be visually representative um, and, and be actually able to be seen by your players, put it on map and background. Now, objects and tokens. Um, these are usually going to be things you move around in the game world. You see now when I switch between layers, um, the, uh, the tokens come into view. Whereas if you're on the map and background, the tokens are kind of blurred out to show that you're not on the same layer. Um, though the, the actual objects in the ba uh, map and background layer, those are always going to be um, showing with no 50% visibility or anything like that. So these, um, these tokens, which can be creatures, can also be objects, um, like smaller objects, stuff that might be moved. Like, for instance, a chair is a pretty good thing to use for a token, a piano, um, maybe... Uh, no, I'm like things like a pillar should really be on the map and background. But um, if you want to be able to move it around, or you want your players to be able to move it around, more importantly, you can actually move anything as the DM uh, in the map and background layer, but your players can't. That's the big difference. If you want your players to be able to move anything, or you think it should be like an NPC, an object that should be moved, then put it on the objects and tokens layer. And using the objects and tokens layer, I've also got another tutorial which shows that you can actually take these uh, tokens and assign them to characters. So, for instance, um, let's take Onu and uh, put another copy of him right on the tokens layer by... Oh, whoops. You're actually supposed to drag the name, not the uh, photo. So now i got another copy of him, although it looks like I did not quite set it up perfectly correctly. So I, I think I'll go ahead and fix that right now. Oh, and uh, this is how you set default tokens. I had it shown in another video. But um, you see how this this version of Onu actually shows the HP bar? Well, that's because it has some settings in there as the token itself. So I'll go ahead and save that there. And now when I drag it, you'll see that it has, well, it doesn't have the HP bar, but close enough. Um, so yeah, anything that you think needs to move, put it in objects and tokens. Anything that you think does not need to move, but it should still be shown to your players, put that into the map and background layer. Um, now, another really important reason why you do this is because if, for instance, uh, we had, like, let's say this pillar or a piano or a chair also on the map and background layer, it would be significantly harder to click on the other pieces of the map and background because these tiles, um, in many cases, may take up um, the entire square, the entire surface area, and make it kind of hard for you to click on objects like this pillar. Now, the pillar is pretty easy to click on, but um, in some cases I've noticed if you do have these tiles on the same layer, it can be difficult to select. So having it on objects and tokens 
pretty much guarantees you won't misclick, you won't click on the floor. Um, now the last uh, layer is the GM overlay. This is going to be stuff that you as the game master should see, but you do not want your players to see. For instance, I have every single one of these rooms labeled um, to let me know which is which. Like, okay, you have the armory there, the bathhouse, guest bedroom, etc. Or etc. And, um, yeah, you can also use, like, like, I could put tokens on the GM layer. I'll do that right here. Let's make a third copy of Onu. And uh, you'll see he's grayed out. Everything in the GM overlay is always grayed out. Um, kind of just because it's it's not really supposed to be representative of something that's physically on the map. It's just supposed to be a note. So if you were to say, um, go and create some text, I guess I can do that. Then you'll notice that even though we've got a pretty, uh, well, let's use a brighter color, like a pretty bright color. It's going to be like 50% visible, so 50% visible. Not right now as I type it, but the second I click off of it. And I've also noticed that, you know, sometimes it shrinks the text down a little bit, but that's just a quirk of the GM Info overlay. Uh, so to reiterate, um, map and background, generally you put tiles and things that will never move inside the game world on there. Um, alternatively, you can just drag and drop a... Um, a fully created map ahead of time and then just to snap uh, snap it to the grid but that's another trick that you can do with the uh, program and objects and tokens is basically going to be things that should move around uh, could move around possibly smaller objects barrels um, rocks like if you have a giant boulder trap or something like that uh, characters and non-player characters definitely and um, yeah just about anything else that needs to be visible, but doesn't fit on the map and background. And then thirdly, the GM Info Overlay, which can be anything you want, but should really be um, consisting of parts that do should not be shown to players, but you may want to make a note for yourself as the DM. So uh, anything, any symbols, any text that can kind of give you a hint as the DM when you actually run it, right, at the, as opposed to when you are creating it is a good option for the uh, GM Info overlay. So I tried not to ramble too much there. Uh, if you do have any questions or anything was unclear, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to make a pledge to the Patreon, it's patreon.com slash Tutorials. Aside from that, thank you all for watching. I hope you got something out of this, and I will see you all next time.